Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast on a weekend when Everton didn't lose. How good is that? Hello, boys, are you all right? Oh, good, thank you. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I've had good. better days mm-hmm. and I've had worse days. So there good. you go. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Um, let's start with you, Sam. Everton didn't lose at the weekend. 1-1 at Leicester, but, and there is a big but, feels like two points dropped to me. Yeah, and I like big butts, and I cannot lie. But that's, <laughs> that's not the kind of big butt I like. Mm. This is a, I, I was thinking about coming on today, and I was not like thinking whether I should or not. I was going to say, about, only thinking about, about it. <laughs> thinking about coming on. <laughs> I was, uh, and but I was just always, I was thinking like, you know, I want to be positive. I want to try and be positive and I will try, but I don't want to just be, I don't want it to be toxic positivity because I want to be realistic as well. But let me just put this into context by, before we talk about Leicester, can I just quickly tell you that I had one of the best experiences of my life on Tuesday when I took me, me lad to, the, to his first ever match against Southampton. Mm. And despite the fact the performance was dreadful mm. and we lost on penalties and we had 24% possession, mm. there was no atmosphere because of all that. He loved it. And it was honestly, it was brilliant. Poor so we kid. watched we watched most of the game on Saturday together, which we've never done because he's never that, shown that much interest in football. So if he likes that, mm. yeah. imagine. Things can only get better. If could, yeah. Imagine if yeah. we had like 30% possession, they'd be booking mm. an open top bus. I really <laughs> hope you didn't let him watch Man City Arsenal. No, no. Oh, uh, he could have watched it and gone, Dad, what's this completely different sport these lot are playing? Mm. This this isn't the same sport I watch, so that's fine. You know, are you allowed to the... run fast, Dad? Are you allowed to sprint? <laughs> Is this not working football? <laughs> so that that was amazing. And obviously, yeah, that, that was a, a terrible performance, terrible uh, results. And then that takes us through to the Leicester game where I didn't have any optimism, to be honest. Mm. I wasn't I wasn't hopeful. Leicester mm. are a poor team. Um, I thought we played really well for about 65 minutes, 70 minutes. I thought mm. we looked really good. Um, the rain made it difficult, but even then, I didn't think we were really in that much danger. We scored one. We could have scored another. I thought Lindstrom probably should have done better with the chance he had. Mm. Um, he, he was. I thought he was really poor against Southampton, and he had a couple of sitters that he missed. But mm. I, I think he looks like he's from something bit and um, mm. maybe it'll just take him a bit of time to bed in but then mm. it's the same old same old and and once that momentum just starts to shift we just we've got no way of getting it back and no way of putting our foot on the ball and just you know we play completely differently and substitutions play a part in that but all the kind of game plan seems to go out the window and we were trying to play it out from the back but like dribble out from the back when there was <laughs> you know five minutes left just yeah just get rid there's a time and a place for that and it's it's not at Leicester City when you're one nil up under the cosh, and it's the end of the world according to the weather. So <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Oh my god! Get rid of it. it was like Glastonbury when I went. It was just awful. <laughs> so, um, a lot of positives, but ultimately you've got to come away from that feeling really annoyed, really disappointed, and again feeling like the manager didn't. I I put on Twitter. I said the manager looked more confused than Joe Biden in the second half. He was just mm. sort of. Looking mm. at the pitch like he didn't know what to do. The other thing I said was, he's so negative. I bet he buys new sofas and leaves the plazzy sheets on them <laughs> because he just doesn't want to get any stains on them. So yeah, I don't know. It, I, a lot of positives, but ultimately it was it was really disappointing, wasn't it? Yeah, mm. Dave. Yeah, much the same. To be honest with you, I mean, mm. as I said before, my positive shine on this, and I know that I'm not known for my positivity, but we are at least creating chances we are at least scoring goals and we didn't lose Mm -hmm. which is better one point is better than no points again i'm putting the positive slant on this i'm hugely disappointed as we all are and for sure it's two points dropped there's no question of that i Mm -hmm. thought we were far and away the better side um but as i was saying to a mate of mine yesterday i watched the i watched the man city arsenal game with an arsenal mate of mine who lives around here and we were talking football generally and I very much enjoyed the game. And as I say, it was a very much a different sport to what we watch on a Saturday afternoon. Mm. But I said to him that actually, when you look at it, a point away at Leicester 
a point on the road is no bad thing. It's because of the situation that we find ourselves in because of the fact that we, it was the first point of the season and that's why it feels worse. However, if we'd gone into that game with, say, three or four points under our belt and we got a point away at the King Power, I don't think any of us would have been that despondent, if that makes sense. So, again, I'm trying to look at it with a positive slant rather than a negative slant, but I largely agree with everything that Sam said. Hmm. Perth. I just thought, yeah, like both you said there, I think it's the same. It's the hour, isn't it? It's the uh, mm. playing well for an hour and then and then having to change it. I thought the Lindstrom sub was really strange. I just like yes. he'd literally yes. just been in the box and nearly created something. I like I I think he's he's like a final ball away from or a final shot away from doing something, yeah. isn't he, Lindstrom? Mm. It's like it's getting and, better. Though. And actually, in the last couple of weeks, that's a massive upgrade to what we mm. saw, like, in the first game, couple of games, I'm not mm. saying you're not getting on. So I thought that was very strange. And I think the manager's... I think he's actually got a better team than what he thinks he has. And I think that's half the problem. I think... I think... The, it, to me, it's like that last half an hour. We as fans want to go what see us go on because we see how positive it's been, and we know mm. there's going to be there's going to be a change by Leicester. And we know they're going to change the way they play and be a little bit more gun co. And I know the weather was unbelievable, but that's for both sides, so it doesn't really matter. But to me, it should have been well. Actually, we'll just sit and wait and try and pick it off, and we didn't. We went alternate and negative. We brought Harrison on, which just dropped us back even further. Uh, we took and die off as well, so both the wingers went off, and it's like the same old. And even the sub, even pushing the Corey as like the highest midfielder, I just couldn't understand that because I thought Tim Abu. There's a reason why Tim Abu is not starting this game. It's because his last two away games have been pretty poor, really. Play him in that like number eight role and let him sit at the the, the top the, the the top of the midfield because the minute he came on, he started giving the ball away, mm. and it was like. I don't think he understands, or I don't. Maybe it's the players. I don't know. I don't. Know. I don't want to be too negative. Um, but like, when you if if the opposition change the way they're playing, you've got to change it, and that doesn't mean changing to a negative style. It just means getting hold of the ball. And and as Sam was saying, we started. I mean, the goal comes from. I think does it the core? He just like boots it up in the air. Garner doesn't deal with the bounce, and it goes out for a corner, and they score from the corner. And it's just like. We needed five minutes after their subs to go, let's settle it down, let's have a little look. Right. Mm. I just thought it was a little bit too quick to go straight into that negativity. I thought we could have picked them off at will. I thought they were very... I think we've just played the two worst teams in the Premier League and we didn't beat either of them. And and mm. I know it's different circumstances and I am trying to take the positives out of it because I do think that there, there are positives out of it. But again, the, re- the, the manager's subs leave a lot to, to be desired. And I just I just don't know if he understands how to move this team forward. Because I do think this front four now looks a lot better than it did. We were sitting after the Spurs game saying, that front four can never play together like that again, mm. you know. And and it is, you know, on die on one side, Lindstrom, McNeil now in the middle, and obviously a fit Dom up front. And I think that front four offers a hell of a lot more than what we had. Mm. The, the you know I know Dom's still in it and I know McNeil's mm, still in it mm. but I think that four just shows a lot more promise and if you can get the two behind them right and I think that might be that might be Mangala and either of the Garners I I, I don't think Tim had a boonham right now I know he's looked promising early on but I think if you want to get the balance of the team right I think it might have to be two really defensive players to say to the four in front no mm. use just push on I don't know that's that that'll that'll work itself out in the next few games as we get a bit more balanced but I do think there's things to be positive about you know and uh, but but as this manager got the ability to take us past it and make the right subs, because other clubs, that's the big thing, isn't it? Other clubs make important subs that change the game. And I think he, that's where he's been left wanting in the last few games is um, who to bring on. And, and more importantly, I think it's when to bring them on, when to make that clinical sub and and, and grab hold of a game of football. Yeah, the core proven again, he's better further back mm-hmm. than what he is further forward. Uh, I thought it was there for the team. Listen, without being too disrespectful to Leicester, they aren't a very good side, and they were there for the taking. And that's the thing for me. It's not even, it's not even you know 
the points on the road or whatever, they're there for the taking and we couldn't beat them. And that's that's the disappointing thing. The positive side was we at times we did look very dangerous and we looked like we could cause a lot of teams problems. I think defensively there's an issue right now. I think the goalkeeper's an issue right now. I think he needs to get his head together. That got their goal was just to come and punch and he's, he's rooted through his line. But the two centre backs as well, Keane and Tarkovsky getting in each other's way, that kind of thing is frustrating. But there is there is a team there. There's definitely a team in there. Uh, whether this manager can and I don't I, listen, who knows what'll happen. But whoever it is, whether it's him or a new person comes in, they're gonna have to quickly eke out a bit more football from this team because mm-hmm. it's there. And if they do, mm-hmm. and the more positive, they'll win games of football, that's for sure. There was lots of there was positive bits at the weekend. And it, it's difficult to measure whether it looked a lot better because Everton were a lot better, or was it just because they were poor? Who knows? It's probably a bit in between. But just frustrating because Bournemouth was three points mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. was should have been three points and we haven't beat either of them. And that's mm-hmm. that's where I'm frustrated. If it, like you said, Dave, in almost in isolation. You'd be disappointed on the Monday, mm. but you'd be going, well, all right, we, you know, we've, we've blown that, but at least we've got mm-hmm. a point on the road. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we're waiting for that win, and you're looking and going, that was a great opportunity to get that first three points. Yep. That's where the frustration is with me today, is that there mightn't be other teams who play as poorly yeah. as Leicester did on the day, and if we can't beat that, like you know, that's yeah. where it starts getting in your head a little bit then. I mean, to your point in terms of whether this manager or another manager or whoever mm. needs to get more out of the the squad that there is. And again, looking at the positives, as you have done in the fact that there is definitely a side there, you know, mm. and all in many ways, all of the component parts are there. It's just not quite performing properly. It's mm. the mental side that's missing, isn't it? Really, yeah. when you think about it, because they've proven that, you know, they can defend when they want to defend and they can create chances when they want to and they can score goals. But it's about game management and it's about doing this over 90 minutes. And and so surely the, the thing which actually needs work more so than anything else is the mental side. It's concentration, it's focus, it's mm-hmm. it's all those things, isn't it? Mm. Well, again, it's an, well, it's another... It's what? One, two, three. It's the fourth game on the run they've thrown the lead away in. Mm. And, yeah. and that you can't lost it at Arsenal as well. And Arsenal, if you go back, you can't. I think the problem is you can't keep. For me, you can't keep going back to. You can't keep giving teams that well, a, that leg yeah. that route back into games because yeah, no. it will catch up with you. You've yeah. got to be a team that is got to put it into the opposition's mind that when this team scores, they very rarely give leads up. You know what I mean? Mm. And create mm. that pressure mm. where I think right now, and it is like a, the sort of the mentality of the side, Dave, and it might be coming, it might be emanating from the coaches and the manager, or it might not be, mm. but it's their job to try to correct that. But you have got a football a lot of the time is such a mind game, isn't it? Mm. That's what mm. it is. Mm. So it's mm. a feel, it's perception. The perception of Everton at the moment as a team is even if we lose a goal, that's... These are fragile. We can get back mm-hmm. in it. We had, mm-hmm. we had, you know, Emil Heskey's not known for his incredible punditry at times, but even he said earlier in the week, he was like, this team's mentally weak. And if you score a goal, you know, even if they're mm-hmm. ahead, you're never beaten with this team because mm-hmm. they cave in the minute you put mm-hmm. pressure on them. And yet the frustrating thing for me, I mean, Sam, I don't know whether you'd agree with this, but the frustrating thing for me on Saturday was it wasn't like we were under wave and wave of pressure and they've no. scored. It was almost like Ped said, a, a slice of a ball by the Corey. We haven't managed to save the corner and it's in our net. That was the frustration for me. Yeah, and that's when it all seemed to kind of go pear-shaped, wasn't it? Where every decision was the wrong one. And I think if this team do have mental weakness or mental ineptitude, which it appears to be from the look the outside looking in, mm. then that's why those points on the board are even more important. Because if you're not mentally strong enough to be able to kind of grind out wins when you need to, then every point that we miss out on or every point that we gain, if you want to look at it from a positive point of view, it doesn't just change the the context of the league table. It changes the context of the next game mm-hmm. because you're not under as much pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that Leicester game, there's probably a lot more pressure because of Bournemouth 
little bit because of what happened at Villa, although Villa were a good team, but you know, the two goal lead that we gave away again. And it just it kind of it it, it puts more pressure on each game, it puts more pressure on each part of each game. Mm. And I just think this this team doesn't seem to be able to do that. And that's a ship that takes a while to turn around. You've got to have a mm. you almost need like a I think that that Villa game, if we just hold on, even if we'd held on for two two, I think that would have been a a, a a bit of a kind of sh- mm. step in the right direction. The one thing I would say is that front four, like like you've said, look a lot better. And I think Njai is probably one of the more exciting signings we've had in a while. I'd yeah. say because he just yeah. seems to be he's very positive with the ball, mm-hmm. which is. Mm like madness to us like <laughs> whoa he's, he's looking forward almost every time he never seems to give the ball away cheaply or lose the ball even mm. if he tries something a bit uh, slightly audacious mm. you know the, his, i was made up with his goal and if he if he carries on putting in performances like that we you know we're gonna have a a, a player we all we can all yeah. chant the name very it's soon a, it's actually what i like about both wide players is that they've got something ingrained in them that is totally un. <laughs> Dice like if in many ways, like when McNeil playing without, played, playing without fear, isn't well, it? That's it. And when McNeil and Harrison play wide, you feel mm. like the you feel like they're not wingers. You feel like they're there mm. to back up the fullback, and it's almost like being it's being like put into their heads. And and mm. Harrison's probably made up just to be back in the Premier League and to be playing games and will do anything the manager asks. Whereas you look at him dying, clearly that's what he was born for. That X factor and. We all love players like that. It's, you know, I said after the game, it's like they're the kind of players, and you, and it's a good point because what you've just said before, Sam, is they're the kind of players you want, like people, you know, you want kids to get on the back of their shirts. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like if it went, like if someone, if a kid comes up, oh, I want Michael Keane on the back. No, you, you're not. Um, mm. But if someone, if mm. your kid asks about and die, you go, yeah, you can have that because actually yeah. I like him as well. Mm. They, that's what we want to see. And I think on the other side of Linsom, even though it's a little bit early. There are promising signs that he just yeah. wants to get into space, find space yeah. and get into it and run into space. And he's, and that's what I was saying before about getting the balance right. If you play him and you play and die, you've got to then refocus the rest of the team to say, we've got to cover these two. And it takes me back to, I mean, not the same, but I was thinking about it after the game and thinking, well, when Martinez had the two flying fullbacks, uh, in Baines and Coleman, he had to have that midfield right, and obviously they mm. were brilliant. McCarthy put out all the fires, and Gareth Barry just sat in front of the back four and was brilliant. We know that, but but that was their job because those fullbacks were so direct and were so yeah. high. And I want I, that. I feel like with these two, if they do play more, that that will make the manager go, no, I've got to be solid in the middle. And, and we'll find a little bit of a better balance, I think, rather than going, well, we've got two wide men who they'll do that job all day for me. And and all that leads to for me is going long because they offer very little. They're always just backing the full backs up. And, cause, and that, that sort of, for me, gets rid of that decore role as well, which we've been so... We've been, you know, we've we've needed that, and when he hasn't played, we couldn't find it. It gets rid of having that number, that sitter in midfield who sits behind, who all really is his job is to do is to try and get feed off the knockdowns. Dwight McNeil's not like that, is he? Dwight McNeil wants to pick mm. up the ball and 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 do his own thing. And even though I don't think he's like still a magical footballer, that I think he he suits that role in with wide men like we have rather than Decore does because Decore. And whoever's playing the front are basically on their own because those wide men are so deep. So I hope they change the way we play. But as we've all alluded to, has the manager got it enough about him to go, yeah, this works. I know how to find this, this balance. That's how you take a team on, isn't it? I think sometimes when we sometimes we see managers sh- sacked sometimes and from the outside, you go, wow, what are you what are, what are you sacking him for? Or he's done a good job. I think it's because the owner will look at it and go, no, no, you've got good players. You're not using those good players. It'll be interesting to see whether, well, I mean, not obviously not this owner right now, but whether that's something that, that develops. Because I think, Kevin Felwell has stressed that he believes these are good players that he's brought in, and he where, now he might see a role for them. And if the manager's not using them in them role or decides not to play them and goes back, because I just think now nobody wants to go back to seeing McNeil, DeCorey, Harrison. There are options now. Last season there wasn't. He was dobbing on one side, and there was no one really on the left. You know, and I think I think people will go, no, these look like they can do something a little bit different. That puts a pressure on the manager, a good pressure. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting. Didn't lose. Big game now against Palace, obviously, at the weekend. It'll be a tough game, of course, but it's a game that uh, Everton needs to win. The manager needs to win, <laughs> nearly, I think, otherwise... You know, the pressure just mounts, as you alluded to before. Mm. Sam, it's every game you don't win. It just heaps a whole lot of pressure on the next one. And that doesn't create a good environment for uh, for anybody. But hopefully we can get out on Saturday and get a good result against mm. Palace. And then that'll build them for Newcastle, who are unbeatable. I mean, I know Fulham beat them at the weekend. But I was mm. ama- I was, I've seen Newcastle a few times this season. And... I was amazed they had as many points as what they had. The luck run out be, on Saturday, yeah, didn't they've, it? they've been, you know, they have been very fortunate. Could have gone to, top if they won that. It's, which is incredible yeah. because they have been very fortunate. Like Spurs <laughs> destroyed them the other week and they somehow got the mm-hmm. win. And, you know, I know against Southampton, they were battered by Southampton with 10 men, but they still won the game. Yeah. So um, Fulham beat them at the weekend. I just, got wonder a, how got much, uh, I just wonder how much the, the ownership issue plays into it. The management issue, obviously, the, the two are intrinsically connected. But you've talked quite a lot, Baz, and I've totally agreed with you when you've said this about some of the some of the runs that our managers have had recently, like thirteen games without a win, mm. um, but not sacked. Is is that's not what any Premier League team should be should be doing? But if the owners, you know, mid mid sale. How how are you you're not if you're selling your house and the boiler packs in, you're not going to go. I better get a new boiler. You just be like, I will leave that. Mm. I'll be out of here in a minute. I'm buying your house, Sam. No, but you're right. You're right. It's the it's what is left in place, isn't it? I think, I think the I think the owner, even though obviously the time of recording, it now looks like the freaking group of bought Everton rather than John Sexter. Uh, that's what's come out today. So we'll see whether that plays out. We've been down this road before, but it feels and seems like that is now finally done and the freakings own Everton or we're about to own Everton. And we've just seen them sack Daniel De Rossi, so, who is a Roma legend. So maybe, One win in 13, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, this manager had no wins in 13 and still here. Um, but that's what Lampard and that's what thing he got sack with Benitez didn't he but no no manager should be on a run like that Sam you're right whether it you know whether it's Sean Dyche whether it's Jose Marino whether it's Pep Guardiola you shouldn't be going that many games without without getting a win but new owners come in we'll see what happens but Everton have got a everyone at the club's got to do better everybody at the football club from top to bottom we've said this for a while there's no direction, therefore it all trickles in everywhere else. Feel sorry for Sean Dykes in some respects, because who's been steering the ship? Kevin mm. Felwell, you know, who's he taking his lead from? That we've got a, a CEO that's into you know, everyone's bleeding into him at Everton. And that is why where stagnation um comes in. And I remember Ped saying when we appointed Benitez that they've kind of just pulled up the drawbridge now and gone, right, just see what happens while we get to the stadium. And obviously, you know, I think if if Putin wouldn't have invaded the Ukraine, it might be they've had a very different picture, I think, but us went off. But it, it did happen and all that happened. And we have just been sort of treading water for, for the last few years. So for the whole football club's sake, the ownership, I said this in my match reaction at the weekend, it, we can debate Sean Dykes how well a job he's done all day, every day. We can debate whether this team is better than what it's shown. We can debate whether Michael Keane really is an issue at the back or whether Dominic Calvert-Lewin can't score one on one, whatever, whatever, whatever. But while the ownership is up in the air and you aren't getting driven from the very top, all of those things, while our factors, become almost secondary stuff until you can get this and... And, and everything does seem like it's been put on pause while, while we're, we're trying to do this, particularly in the last year, I'd say, even mm. more so, because obviously Farad Mishiri a year ago now, wasn't it, when he said he's agreed to sell it to Triple Seven? That was a year ago, having agreed to sell it to MSP, and that didn't work out. I, I think the freaking group will have it now, because they, they had it the other week, and then they, mm. they put us in the shit a little bit by pulling out and wrecking some transfer things. But hey how. If they have got it now, now it's up to them to drive it forward because we everybody has been. And therefore, it affects everything and it affects the fan base because you're constantly like, where is our club? We're reading stuff, administration, mm. blah, 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 blah. So 
I think me personally, this is the single most important thing. The rest of it will follow and should follow. But we it's need foundation, isn't it? You know, that's yeah. it's, 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 the club has to be built upon something, and at the moment, mm. there is no foundation, mm. um, and that's why, as I say, it's a job that Sean Dyche is doing, and whatever you think about him, good, bad, or indifferent, but mm. you know, you have to feel for him in terms mm. of the circumstances under which he's been operating for a while now. Um, but yeah, it just has to be done. Uh, you know, nothing can be done of any long or well, mid to long term basis without the ownership being sorted out. So let's just fingers crossed that this mm. is it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we have something that we can build on. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's the footy done. Get rid of that. <laughs> Get rid of it. Get rid of it. <laughs> um, I was in ours, we've got a mantra. Why well, wouldn't like, you have a manzo? Exactly. Um, which is Do you tidy that or does Jesus no, no, no. tidy that? No, no, Jesus okay. left it. <laughs> so it's it's in our kitchen and uh, my missus has been like, we have to sort this out. This is like this key. Is she allowed to sort it out this though? Key, yeah. Would it's, it being a manzo? It's a manzo in name only. It's not real. It, it, it just wouldn't have felt <laughs> right to call it a Gender man and neutral woman. drawer. It's a, mm. It is what, it, to be honest, it's a it's the drawer of shite, but it, it was christened right. the manzo, right? Because uh -huh. I'm, there's house, I'm sure there's a... Full of Yorkie of, bars and stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> not for girls and all that. And yeah. Alan Nuts, Keys. Alan, Nuts Alan magazine. Keys, Alan Keys are in there. I'm sure <laughs> there's house keys for the house. Yeah. Keys. We left 20 <laughs> years. I'm going to say keys. Keys to the shed that you no longer own. Yeah. All sorts in there. Um, so that is, we have begun the the painful process. Only painful because it's it's gone. Mm. Why is this piece of metal in the drawer? Yeah. Like, this has been put in yeah. for a reason, mm. Mm. which no one can yeah. remember. So we have begun the the thing of lashing it. Okay. It's basically getting lashed yeah, now. Yeah. And, and a few things will be kept. But I did stumble upon a conversation when I put my headphones in that Dave and, and Sam were already talking about. And Dave was about to enlighten mm. us about said keys and stuff like that. So Dave, have you had this where it's a gender neutral draw full of keys from, from houses you owned 30 years ago? Well, you wouldn't have done being 17, but you know, sure. maybe your parents' first keys or whatever give you or that kind of stuff. I mean, I certainly, I've never thought about associating a gender with well, it was draw. Michael McIntyre who gave it, christened it, well, we the man's well, draw. Well, that's, that's why no, I, I yeah, instantly you know. wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. be party to it, because anything that he says normally switches me off. <laughs> it's a bad oh, start, isn't it? Oh, okay, fair play. He's just, he just has that effect on me. You fair know? play. I, mean, I, I find him instantly turnoverable. Hmm. Oh, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's a word. What a verb. Yeah. Fair anyway, uh, so I do have said draw yeah. uh, containing said items, and yeah. yes, I do definitely uh, have keys in there for doors which I know not where or don't own that shed or that house anymore, <laughs> but I still have these things because for some reason it seems weird to throw keys away. Mm -hmm. So we just keep them. You're right. I've never seems attached. Wrong. Yeah. I've never mm. attached a gender to it, but it's no. just a drawer. It's just, it's underneath the cutlery drawer, right? Right. Yeah. Cutlery yeah. Drawer at the top, That's where my was. Yeah. And then mm. it's underneath there. Mm. It's just a sort of miscellaneous drawer. Mm. Okay. Right? Um, and what, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, that was it. So before we were recording, we were talking about the fact that Ned of mm. your parish yeah. owns something in the region of 45 Allen keys. Yeah, um, Sam that we know then, of. That, that we, we know, know of, of yeah. I mean, mm. this is it. Sam then said that he estimated his total Allen key, uh, you know, arsenal mm. to be somewhere mm. in the region of 30, mm. which is still considerably more than mine. Mm. Some are duplicates. Let me point that out. Okay, fine. Yeah. Good yeah. to know. Good to know. Mm. And then, um, and I feel in in many ways that you've built this up to be potentially far more interesting than it actually no, is. Because no. because then my my head then went into a key analogy, not an Allen key analogy, right? But it reminded me of the fact that I now need to go to my mum's at some point in the next week or so because due to keys, I have now got a hole in the right hand side pocket of both my jeans and my shorts which means that stuff now falls through you know when you get that feeling where you can yeah. feel like a coins or whatever yeah like, no sort of running oh, down your coldness. leg or into yeah, your yeah. sock yeah, yeah. exactly because yeah. that has now happened yet yeah, the jeans themselves have still got mileage left in them mm. so i need to get my mum to do a job which only mums can do and emergency and I, dan 
Correct. She yeah. can darn things because yeah. that's mm. like a, a skill from a bygone mm. age. Yeah. I wouldn't have a clue how to fix said pocket with the darning. Yeah. Mm. Whatever. Technique. For people who are unaware what darning is, because you're not mm. in gator communities like Michelle mm. and Dave. Yeah. It's basically, <laughs> it's basically it's darn- sewing it's- a pocket. Basically. Mm. Yeah. Bit, of, bit of sewing. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but darning, I think, is something that we should talk more about. I think so. As, I think as so. men who aren't afraid to yeah. discuss, you know, their 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 issues. That's Absolutely. it. That's it. it reminds and, me of, it's it's one of those uh, topics very much like minding other people's horses. Yeah. Now and again, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to discuss got it. To. You've got Why to discuss you? it. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to say that, you know, I am a 40-year-old man. And, and I'm quite happy to discuss <laughs> horses, darning of pockets. Yeah. New age, getting... Dave. Exactly. All Lots these man. things. Uh, you know, exactly. Mm. I mean, it's, mm. it's one of my many qualities, I would say. Poster boy I of the so. darning community. Why darning mean, community. Well, darning <laughs> weekly. <laughs> I, I was, Guest I was MT, Dave Vitti. I was emptying, I was emptying out me air. Uh, you know, like your toolbox that you keep all your tools in. I'm not very why, good why, I'm sorry, so. so why were you emptying it out? I was, Surely I was that's one of the rules Allen of key. a toolbox. It's that uh, you don't empty it out. You just keep adding tools. It's an amass. Yeah, so, so mm. what happened was I was looking for an Allen key for my kid's bike, which is why I've got a rough estimate of how many Allen keys I <laughs> own. Are um, you sure? That isn't just an inventory. Off, it's, in, it's in the 30 plus range. Mm, somebody's so, doing well. Yeah. Some are duplicates, <laughs> you know. But I, I keep them both because I think, well. Did you buy you know, these Allen keys or did they all just come with things from Ikea? Mm. I, no, I have numerous properties. I have to leave all the Allen keys in. So wherever I am, if I'm in Monaco, yeah. you know, I've got my Allen key there. Sure. If I'm in uh, mm. Slough, I don't know. Slough? <laughs> <laughs> what what, what have you got? What property have you got in Slough? Uh, it's a, a, a lock really up. Bin. Oh, yeah, okay. it's a lock up. Don't what, talk about a it. A wheelie bin? What one? Oh, no, it's Dave who asked <laughs> his 90 year old neighbor to show it. Full of Allen keys. <laughs> yeah. Just full. Fair so what point. I found was over the weekend in this toolbox, I found this lead. And I, I didn't know what each end was connected to. It wasn't a normal, it wasn't a phono lead. It wasn't a scar lead. It was like these indistinguishable ends. And I thought that is utterly useless. Yeah. I should mm. throw that out. But, but instead, I put it in another box mm. that went in another box that I put in the loft so that when my when I die, my kids can throw it out. Yeah. Mm. So it's done now. I've got a huge box of leads and, and you do, you go in them and go, that thing that isn't compatible with anything anymore might come in handy might once come. again in case mm. i come into into someone leaves me a fax so machine you, you are very much <laughs> not like ever yeah. Yeah. you don't throw leads or I, no, I don't throw. my your drawer is my house <laughs> basically like my house is just like full to the brim in case you need of to. shite mm. my missus okay. just like collects like, literally, I am not messing when I would say that there is still just bags of Christmas presents from, like, three or four years ago just knocking around the house. Like, things that have been... people have bought you? No, that I've bought here, mostly. Oh, and she doesn't And they're them. just, like, still in the bag. And they, they haven't even... wrapped them up for this Christmas. I know, I might do. I might go full, I'll like... See if she knows. Yeah, I might do, I might do. There's just, like, low... Our house is just covered in just draw shite, I'm going to call it. Okay. Just things everywhere. Why you... Has anyone ever just re-gifted? Just yeah. I, I have, yeah. I, I always mm. re-gift. I go to, mm. every time it's my dad's birthday, I always go to the Lost Property box in here. Um, oh, that's great. But has anyone ever re-gifted to the same person that they initially gifted that gift no, to? Because normally, no, 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 you, no. Cause that, that could be a new thing. No, that's you have a, to, yeah. that's the thing is because actually when you're going to do re-gifting, if you're going to do it properly, you have to have a system and you have to be organised, right? Dave Which sounds like he's therefore... done this before. At the time of re- receiving said gift, right, which is then going to go on the transfer list, you have to make a note of who's given it to who's you. Who's given it, yeah. Therefore, not only can you not give it to that person, but mm. also you can't give it to anybody who is yeah. closely associated to that person, <laughs> i.e. direct relative, mm. because they will talk, or neighbours, I think, also comes into mm. that category. So you have to make sure that whoever you re-gift it to is beyond that immediate sphere mm. of influence, I think. You need an algorithm. But, yeah, you do. You do. The you other do. thing as well, the other thing as well, which which is a is a seasonal pastime of mine, is that I <laughs> I I keep Christmas as a general rule. I don't give Christmas cards, right? Mm. Not yeah. because I, I just I can't be asked. You know, say you're saving the world, fair play. Exactly. But what I do do is I keep a small stock of Christmas cards in the glove box of my car. Mm, because what I like to do is I like to adopt the 
um, uh, the kind of the return approach. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What yes. Happens is, Sensible. So what happens is somebody gives you a card and you kind of go, oh, it's just reminding me. I've got yours in the car. <laughs> and then you quickly go to the car, right? And you write their card as if it were there anyway. And mm, then you give yeah. it back to them. As you if blow you the ink, it. though, before you seal it. Because <laughs> if you close it, you're getting, you see, there's an opportunity for smudging to no, take no, place. I, yeah, I, be great. I like to think Dave's got a stamp. Just with just like yeah. Happy Christmas from the just Vitty family. Love Vitty. Boom. Boom. Yeah. It's done. Boom. It's it's out the it's, room. It's, well, do you know what it is? It's it's not not so much done ped, processed. Yeah. It's Pro yeah, processed. processed, yeah. Well that's it. I mean you the double shot. Ulti yeah. Ultimately though, that, you know. But ultimately that, though, they love that. That would be that's yeah. done. I imagine the stamp is done in like September. He's yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, 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 He ain't changing his name, is he? He's talking about and all he has to do is put to Gillian. Oh yes, just add the name. Haircut, add the name. Gillian, bang, Don't even like, just the, to the mm. family, and then so just the... no, and then just add. Oh, add has, the name. Just add the name. So, the, so therefore reducing the pre -stamped, opportunity for smudge. Pre-stamped, yeah. and you know the envelope, Dave. Have you gone for the tucking approach now? Because mm. you can't lick it, can you? No. If you're given a quick return, yeah. you no. Know. So if you just tuck tucking in. in the back, mm. just a little mm. tuck, yeah. slide it. Yeah. Job done, isn't it? Absolutely. No, I mean, these are all things you have to think about, but it is my kind of return mm. serve approach to... I like it, return to send it. I like it. The other Here's option it. is to just say, I'm not giving cards out this year, I'm donating money to a charity, and mm. then just never give money to the charity. That's and always just, my approach at funerals, Sam. Mm. <laughs> it's always yeah, my approach. A lot of people do that. Don't bring... Fla yeah, I'm going to donate. Does it? Does never it's happen, does it? Let's be honest. None of us ever donate oh, after no. funerals. What? Well, it's, it's you know, we're having a we're having a chat. We're being open. We've already spoken about I Alan don't Keys. tell people I'm gonna mm. donate and don't. That's I've never done it. Never will. Yeah, well, you just don't tell people you're gonna donate. That's, that's sure. I've, I've never mm, just okay. said that. That's what I'm saying. You just don't don't say you're gonna <laughs> I donate. Of I, I, this works. But when I say something, you don't repeat it. You no, no, I, start to sound like Ned. No, that's what I'm saying. You just don't say you're going. I'm going to. I'm lightening the place by coming. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sort that. No, well, I just take whatever is necessary on mm. the day. Okay. I went. I don't have, have one though. thing. I will say. Sorry, Sam. Quickly, I don't have a glove box no. full of like in, Slummy. in sympathy no, cards. No. You know, I think they've died from now. The, the good thing about got, that is though, up here in the glove. Nah, but the good thing about that is if you give taste. if you give cash day to them. You don't have to tick that box, do you? That where you know what's that box when the you give the gift aids and it's true. like suddenly goes up by seven fifty. I was like, well, it doesn't go up. It they, does. They claim that no, it no, not well, I. What are you? You shoot shot you? <laughs> I, I, Someone shot you. What? I've done. They can claim that. I don't back on said. Gift. I done a gift aid last week yeah. and it went up by seven fifty. Well, someone's had you off. I, that would... isn't really our no, gift aid. No, no, aid no. no. I'm, I'm, no, I think I'm. I think I'm with Ped because if you give, mm. for example, if you give twenty five quid to somebody, yeah. and you sponsor them doing the marathon or whatever it is, Changed. then with gift aid on yeah. top. Then goes that up becomes whatever it is like that's I thought not it was really just gift aid gift reduces no, that's gift what it is reduces. now it's changed I, as someone who gift aids quite a did bit did it last week you should be an ad off no did it last week well it must be Keir Starmer then did it last week he's taking seven and a half quid off you is there, have you been taking gift aid pants? on those Ni Nigerian lottery he has yeah <laughs> gift aid. just give us that money plus 750 because I've got 10 million in me flat waiting to give you mm. you've been left this in a will by the way does anybody do that thing in Mackey's where it asks you to round up yeah I don't do it, but I know I'll of it. it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do it either, just on principle. Yeah. But, How about you, know. you get the people we're supposed to be donating to and get them in here so you can clean the tables? How about that? And give them some money. And give them some money. How about, them. You, how about you, Ronald, you prick? Get in mm. here mm. and mm. pay them instead of mm. me giving Asking. Them. You know what I mean? It's the mm. same with... I, it does my head in with Everton. No, you're buying mass. It does my yeah. mass. Okay. And, oh, are you going to donate an extra 15 yeah. quid to Everton yeah. in the community? No, mate. Yeah, yeah. No. No, why? Because... Because I ain't kids! No, for years... <laughs> no, I'm going to donate to Everton the community. I'll donate mm. to Everton the community. Yeah. But for years, you have been shit and yeah. have used Everton in the community's goodness to pretend you're doing a good job. There so, you go. no. And that's why the children of Walton will not be fed this Christmas. They'll be fed from a direct gift. Unlike you, who says you will and never will. You <laughs> know what I mean? I'll take him to Mackey's. <laughs> of course you will, yeah. And I'll, and round I'll up. cut out the middleman. round up. I'll cut out the middleman and just take them. I know, well, why would they round up if I've literally taken the, the kids to have a burger? Mm. I don't Makes see sense. It's like when, when Mackey starts saying stuff like in all the publicity where they go, oh, we've, we, the, last year we cleaned up something like, you know, Two and a half thousand tons of toxic waste. 
I was like, yeah, but you're the ones who created it. Yeah. So what do you want a pat on the back? Oh, you've what you've pooed on the sofa, but you've wiped it down. Like, no wonder no Ronald's on. face is white. Where, you see, this is where Sean Dyke just clean it. Back. Will come mm, in handy yeah. if that's mm. happening because he's got the cellophane on yeah. it. You can just wipe. I it bet off. you. Yeah. Any, I he, tell you what. I bet you if you went down the side of Sean Dyche's sofa, you would find a shitload of Allen keys, mm. <laughs> just everywhere. Just, nuts and bolts. Just nuts and bolts find. and Allen keys all over that. Nuts all and over bolts that sofa. On the glass, you would find. You yeah, have to get sure. your hand down the plazzy sheet that he's left on. <laughs> that's it. That's what I'm Show saying. Mm. That's why it, the you know. Yeah. That's so he doesn't lose the Allen keys. Fair. Well, he's always just thinking. He's always thinking on the plastic. Do you boys help? like a tip, a trip to the tip? Yes. Yes. Because I know we were talking about clutter. They were emphatic. Like, you know, yes, they were. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that I was find too it, quick. I find, it, I find it cleansing. Cleansing. I find it cleansing. Weird. And I, I, it's like a spa trip for a man, mm. isn't it? Really. Mm. I, I always forget <laughs> as well. Or the other genders, of course. Yeah, but mainly, well, but mainly most, men. But mainly men, because it tends well, to be a the a, man a, a male pastime. Mm. But I. I went yesterday and I forgot how much I enjoy it. And I, I actually mm. went, I enjoyed it that much. I came out and I realized I had some more stuff in the booth. And I, I turned around the roundabout and went straight back in again. Oh, <laughs> which part? Is, when, what, what part of it do you the, enjoy? When you know the people there and you know their names, then, you know. <laughs> That's I mean, the thing I've you're been, going I, to, I, I often, don't, Dave. I don't, I'm, I don't currently enjoy that relationship no. with any of the uh, tip operatives where no. I live. But in the past, I have been known to know their names mm. because I was okay. sort of going back and forth maybe three or four times a day. I've heard that one because <laughs> that's because <laughs> Sheila does Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays in the in the barbers, but does Tuesdays it's and Thursdays. Gillian. It's Gillian. Sheila in my head. In my head, it's Sheila. Gillian. It's Gillian. Okay. Talking of which, actually, I need to go back there soon. Do you think, do you think I need chopping again? Do you know, I don't know. It looks all right. I seem to be about every six nice. weeks. I need, to, I need to, I need to see when I was last there. I'll consult my, uh, my diary. But back, ju- sorry, just back to the tip. Yeah. It mm. is really therapeutic mm. when you get the crap out. You're out you, know- you drive it there and then you launch it. As you drive okay. away, there's a mm. feeling but of free. Do you not get like? Yeah. I don't know which tip. Do you go to Green Lane tip? Yeah. Right. Do you not get a little bit when you get there and you're like. Am I supposed to be throwing this thing in? No, because there's fellas there. You ask. I don't want to talk to fellas, though. You don't want to talk to any. No, but I. It's, it's just a same. miracle. But it's like this. it's like anything, isn't it? It's like getting directions. <laughs> I think going go the tip is like getting directions. I don't think a man should throw, ask another man where he should be throwing his you stuff. Get told. I don't want to be told. It shows Why? Because I'm a be grown strong. man. Mm. I'll throw. I want to know. That I doesn't. See what? What does this grown man? I'm a grown man. I don't feel like another grown man should be telling me where where to put my stuff <laughs> See, so, Dave's doesn't I, have that problem because he just drives up myself. and everyone goes I'm quite happy hey Dave how was the weekend yeah. Dave I'm Dave leave it the all there we'll sort it that's what yeah. they say feels no, a little it's, bit submissive it's, it's not just the it's not just the getting rid it's also mm. what you can acquire with the, <laughs> oh, okay no, but, 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 okay, okay. now no, by this well, clarification well, needed, even, David. Even, even beyond that, right? And I'll give you an example. Is it years ago, right? My missus at the time. I mean, she's long gone now. No, I mean, she's still alive. She's not dead or anything, but she's she's, she's not my missus anymore. Oh, right, right. I thought it was going to be an ITV drama. There, I, thought I was no. having to go to no. the glove box for a bleeding sympathy card. Then, Dave. Anyway, <laughs> listen back to me. So, um, so I I'd gone to the tip one day, and I knew that she was very much uh, interested in a what they call a Welsh dress dresser, right? Yeah, you're aware yeah. of these. Yeah, it's, a Welsh, it's like a it's like a chest of drawers, but then no. with a sort of with, with a sort of cupboardy bit on the top. Cupboardy right? bit. Sorry, I thought you meant someone wearing a Wrexham top. <laughs> no. So, so I knew that she wanted one of these Welsh dresses, and she'd been looking on the sort of uh, not uh, were they uh, upcycled or whatever websites, and yeah. some of these were going for like five, six hundred quid, and like sort of stupid money like this. Anyway, mm. so I'm there, and I've just gone and launched a load of crap right from from the garage and stuff, mm. and I'm just about to get back in the car, and I look over, and I'm like thinking, yeah, that looks like a chest of drawers. Oh, that looks like the top bit. If that, if that goes on there, that's the Welsh dresser, right? All that needs is sanding down and painting. And right? a Swansea shirt. You're laughing, yeah. So so I went up to the guy and I said, listen, how does that, how does it work? You know, can I just take it? And he's going to go, no, you've got to pay for it. And I said, well, how much is it? And he kind of goes, oh, give us 15 quid. So I spent 15 quid on this Welsh dresser and brought yeah. it home. She did, in fact, sand it down. She painted it in one of those sort of vintage style greys or whatever like that. She mm. was delighted with it. It cost 15 pound plus the paint. Call it 20 quid, something like that. And like these things are going for about five, 600 quid. Win That's win amazing. It. That could be a new reality TV show, isn't Dave it? Could be. Mm. Dave the tip dweller. 
Cash back with Dave. Yeah. Mm. God, that's I think so. I could see that. Well, I'm sure I, I, it'd just be Vitty's tips. Oh, yeah. Good. Vitty's mm. tippies. Vitty's tip tips. Tip oh, that tips. sounds rude. Mm. I had a very on... therapeutic. You should definitely put that on your Tinder profile. Do you think? <laughs> that's one of your skills, yeah. 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 I think that would, that would, yeah. Repurposed. Yeah. Well stressed. Mm. That'd have them all. It's yeah. quite niche and quite niche, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But fair mm-hmm. Can I just tell you about go my on, therapeutic Sam, experience at the tip? Because yeah, go on, mate. I'm seeing out the loft and yeah. uh, I found all these old items. Me, about 15 years ago, my wife had set up this design business and she was doing all the kind of artisan things. Your wife's still very fears. much on the scene, Sam, she's isn't she? Very just much still there. Like, she, okay. she, she, not, she yeah. didn't get launched into no, like, you she know, hasn't gone, yeah. Tip six. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. No, but never say never. That's what they're saying. <laughs> <it>. um, <laughs> is, that, is that the right tip, though? I wouldn't know because I, oh, I can't speak to the fella, so I could throw mm. in the wrong one. Vitty tips. I had this box. I found this box of old like ceramic mugs that she printed out all these designs, and she'd done a load of Liverpool FC mugs because she's a Liverpool fan. So oh, I thought, I'll, I'll enjoy throwing these into Born the... Born well. Um, I can't remember which one it was. It was like the way you throw all the stones and stuff and the flag. Yeah. So I was it's just lashing. Hardcore, hardcore isn't it? H- hardcore and rubble. That was it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was throwing all these Liverpool mugs. That's, I was like, that's certainly my favourite topic. Like, <laughs> hardcore, r- hardcore and rubble. You sound like a drum and bass outfit, don't they? Or the Flintstones. Was just, net I was going to say, I thought it was a category that yeah. Ned goes on. Yeah. Go on, so I'm throwing the Liverpool mugs. And I'm yeah. like, yes, this Smash feels them. good. And then I thought I'd emptied the box, but there was another layer underneath. And underneath was a load of Everton mugs. <gasps> and I started throwing them, and that was even better. <laughs> that like, even yes. better. <laughs> I felt like Neil Malpai when I drove out the tip. Yes. Yeah. Clean. Just clean from, Good. you broke out the prison. <laughs> Hardcore rubble. What That's tremendous. Rubble. What a tremendous one. Isn't that mm. non-recyclables? Or is it? Is it called? It's bad called rubble sounds like the Flintstones after dark. Yeah, those done it. Barney did. Yeah. Well, depends what goes on with them. You know, Barney well, and, and obviously Dave. Did Dave, say, yeah. Dave did yeah. say last week. Him and now Betty, we know. Him and Betty. Now we know. Goes on, but I heard the bed rocks. Absolutely. Hey. 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 Oh, hang on, that's wrong. There you go. Yes, Sam. Um, here listen, all week. Quick, quick one on the on the on the. You tip. could be a comedian. Yeah, right. go on. Is uh, did your tip now charge you for certain items, or is that just something that 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 we have well, to do? Like, I think right, I want to say no, but you two will come back because now you've <laughs> dropped no, the no. gift aid bomb. Sorry, sorry. Now there'll be a tip. Bomb. I just think Dave's tip is a massive like <laughs> swindle. <laughs> Money it's making. Getting, it is. The people there that don't even work there. Yeah. They've just like those stuff. Stuff. I've never like those, heard you have to pay. You know when you go to the match and you just see some fella in a in a high vis going. Mm. 10 pound parking lot, 10 yeah, pound, yeah. and you mm. feel like you almost have to drive in there. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the same with your tip. These fellas are just rocked up, throwing a high vis on. It's not even a tip, it's just a bit of wasteland. Well, and well, Dave's there buying uh, he's, and selling. Oh, he's coming back. In, 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 in contrast to what you just say, Peter, <laughs> is actually there is even a price list now to, to make it official. Whereby, <laughs> certain, no, no, seriously, certain items you have to pay to dispose of, right? So, what this is all about, it, I think it's to try and in the same way that you're not allowed to tip with vans right you, you vans oh, you're not yeah. allowed to bring in right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But i think it's supposed to dissuade those who are doing up houses from okay. just launching all of their stuff yeah for nothing so yeah. they do charge Nick you for certain, for certain okay. things you know like which you're not allowed to 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 do well you like to you like to tip them but you have to pay the like clay. four or five quid that way it's called the tip because you have to tip them mm. ah, i see i see you dave it? no that sort of <laughs> makes sense mm. in a way Thanks. it's like big you're van. not allowed to you're not allowed those tips by ours you have to register the van and the you, van can only go, you can only go once a month you can yeah. you can only go once yeah. a month so Do you have to book a slot or can you, you have just to if you've got a van if you've got a big van you have to book a slot and you can only get one slot a month but yeah. as a civilian though do you have as to a civilian a people yeah. in the army can do it whenever they want yeah. they no, no, bleeding no, tanks. No, what, I, what i mean is i know of <laughs> other people who live in other other um districts is mm. probably the word right you have to they have to make an appointment right <laughs> they have to, on the tip know, for them. They're like i want to go at 11 o'clock on saturday morning oh i couldn't get 11 o'clock but they've given us half two or something right mm, whereas yeah. mine is still old school i can just turn up when i want turn up when you want yeah, mate that's yeah. what we can we can ours is conveniently next to a probation center right. so if you've got any unruly kids that you need to drop off you can do that mm-hmm. go in the tip they sign yeah. come back you take yeah. your it's it's brilliant. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, it's it's an interesting duo. You know, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I've seen, I've seen mm. well, hardcore you know. and rubble. It is, isn't it? It really is. Please oh, welcome hardcore and rubble. hardcore 
and rubble. You don't score. <laughs> Hear me out. Has anyone got no, any... No, hard, sorry, hardcore and rubble are the sort of outfit that I can imagine could be advertised at traffic lights. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You know when you you know when you turn up at with the two one, thingies like, on like a big junction or maybe even a roundabout cable tied to a lamppost. Yeah, and you have, and they're probably doing New Year's Eve in scam. <laughs> hey, why wouldn't you? And there will be a mobile number for tickets. <laughs> two cable ties, either <laughs> end. And <there> <laughs> two cable ties and a drum machine. Hardcore and rubble. <laughs> Hardcore and rubble. Uh, any any other topics that need bringing up on this Monday? I'm all right, you know. Ah uh, yeah, okay. Well, I saw. I was thinking about this yesterday. Man, for a walk. This, like, we were out for a walk and seeing it. But... Hang on, it didn't stop raining yesterday. When the, what? What the, did you just the, go for a walk while it rained? Forty before it rained. Oh, and um, find the window. There was a. Or was there just someone was walking a, behind you with a big brolly? A wind. <laughs> we had teeth for either end. <laughs> two big brollies. But I seen this dog, and I love dogs. But this dog was a knobhead. It looks Scottish for a start. It looks Scottish. It looks what Scottish. did it have on a kilt? No, it looked... But it, can it, of no, super no, no, in its hand? It looked like it was going, yeah, fucking little bell end to this other right. dog that was walking <laughs> past, right? Little dog. And I just thought to myself, like, what animal do you reckon's got the biggest knobhead attitude? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like mm. not even what's the biggest knobhead, yeah. but it looks like it's yeah. got a bad attitude. Because this Scottish dog, yeah. I'll be mm. honest... Mm. I don't even know if Scottish <laughs> talk, but you know what I mean? It looks like yeah, it's Scottish. Yeah. It looked like it just... Packing a shortbread and it's it looked like it, <laughs> Yeah, it had, you know, it's tartan <laughs> on the back. It looked like it had a cob on. Yeah. And it was out for a walk, yeah. getting fresh air. Yeah, you know, it's worse when you walk past the house mm. and the dog's in the window looking at you like, are you all right there? Yeah, yeah. In the fresh air, having a walk. This one was out getting fresh air yeah. and looked like it was like... Still had enough to... A wee little bell in. You know what, that or... Are you looking at, you know, that kind of thing with like a mm. cob on? So I was mm. thinking, not just dogs, mm. I want to broaden it. Yeah. What animal do you think has got the worst attitude? Like, by looking what you think. You know, when you look at it, it can be anything. Mm. But you look at it and think, your attitude stinks. You see, I'm going to say a poodle, but I know that's technically a dog as well. Mm. I mean, it's not technically a dog, well, it's a dog. dog. I mean. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it, it, it's totally a dog. Right? It's totally a dog. <laughs> it's totally a dog. It's just like a type of dog. Yeah. But I always think that poodles look like they should have an attitude it's they look just... snooty some of them don't they yeah. i think but that's not on them though is it i think they look though like oh what are you doing walking down my road see we had a that's poodle like... as a kid and it was boss and obviously I'm not we... saying that not... no no but we didn't cut it in a, in a way to make it look like a knobhead so mm. that's on the that's on the owner very intelligent he's poodle, knobhead yeah, they're they're it. to be intelligent aren't they which is so why was... they always look like they're looking down the nose at you because yeah, you know maybe. they could probably maybe. beat you in the sudoku mm. well easily Easy. Yeah, I reckon hippos are knobheads. Hippos. Yeah, they look they look like bad knobheads. Mm. <laughs> they do. They do. They look like I don't know. They look like they're old something. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They think the world owes them a like... living. Look at... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll be honest. I've never looked since at they a got... hippo and thought. <laughs> listen, you look like the world owes you a living. Since they got that game, right? Yeah, <laughs> they've just <laughs> yeah, got to become the yeah, it's absolute the knobheads. It's gone to the reds. Mm. They just want feeding everywhere they go. It's like feed I think yourself. flies have got to go into this conversation, haven't they? Because they just don't flies. understand. But they're insects, aren't they? They don't and understand personal space, do they? Technically, they're insects. They yeah, don't they understand personal space. Insects. Flies. That's the yeah. one thing they don't understand they is getting in your personal quicker. space. Mm. You know? Well, keep, let's yeah, keep... Moss, insects will go well. for another day. How about that for a tease? What was that? How about that for a tease? Yeah, I mean, in... you know, the thing with pod the thing with podcasting is that you've got to give them a place that, that the audience are excited to visit. Right? Exactly. And yeah, you've got right. to keep them wanting more. Because and, but, but the way that you have just thrown that in, Barry, right, yeah. in terms of the fact that another day we are going to discuss insects. Mm. Right? And then after that we could do mineral. Yeah. We could yeah. do vegetables. Fish. No. Fish. What? Hey, wait till we do the biggest dick. Wait till we do our landfill <laughs> special. Surely that's an eggplant or a cucumber. We're going to be doing our landfill special landfill soon. Special. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Whoa, hang on. No, we go on. A, you've gone for hippo. I've gone for hippo. You think hippos look like they think the world owes yeah. them a living. No, it's just like, like, we've got this game. Everyone should give us stuff. Okay. Basically. Okay, I like it. Mm. I like it. Okay. I'm going to say honey badger. Have you seen a honey that's badger? Your tinder, that's your Tinder name, isn't it? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Honey Badger 69. 
Honey badges are not bad. They are. I think they're well badged. Bad, yeah. <laughs> so go on, Sam. Um, bit, of, bit of background before we finish. Go on. Honey badges are, I think, utter knobheads. But yeah. I tell you this, if I was going into some kind of animal royal rumble, I'd want to be on the side of a honey badger. Yeah, they, honey they badges are not, naughty. Not Can I ask you a question? Around. Yeah. Please. Would I come across as being stupid if I didn't fully know what a honey badger was? <laughs> no. Uh, no, not no, at all. Not fully. I mean, but taking it's a type of badger, but do they It's a kind of honey. honey. Do they make honey? <laughs> it's aggressive. <laughs> It's an aggr- it's aggressive, and I think they go and steal the honey from the yeah. bees, and they don't care. So the bees are like, "This is ours. Get off!" And they're like, "No, it's not mine okay. now." But yeah. also, when you look at the size differential, you wouldn't imagine that a badger and a bee would be <laughs> a fair fight. No. <laughs> but what about enemies. a badger and what about a badger and fifty bees? Sounds well, like a bee yeah. strip, doesn't it? Yeah. The badger and the bee. I think we're getting onto the um, steal the honey. Are we? Are we all getting into the category of insect? Hang on, aren't we getting into the category of mm. who'd win a thousand lions yeah. of the sun? Yeah. Let's oh, not yeah. stay into Let, that direction. All right, so, so we know Sam's there's only gone, one winner. Sam's that. gone honey bad yet. Okay. Dave, mm. are you sticking with Poodle? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Final answer. Final answer, Poodle. I'm going kangaroo. Oh, okay. yeah. Good yeah shows. I mean, that's, I mean, that's ca- part of the It's a course, bit re- one. But, hey. The flexing, aren't they? Yeah, but... The flexing. Mm-hmm. We saw, me and Jack showed me a, a clip last week of the kangaroo just having a dog off. And then the fella got in and cracked the kangaroo. Mm-hmm. But then the, cra- the kangaroos cracked them back. But the fella took it. He mm. took it. But it was trying to drown a dog. It's like, why are you trying to... <laughs> does it might have been a poodle. No, it wasn't a poodle. But there's no, a lot of... With the hair, they take on a lot of weight, wouldn't they? They yeah. would. They would. But I'm just thinking... You're big. You've got yeah, like yeah. you've got pecs. The yeah. kangaroo. It yeah, can yeah. spark mm-hmm. you out, whack you with its claws. You don't know what it, that dog on. did to that. No, I know, but what? It's got to be sinister and a knobhead if it's thinking I'm dragging this dog into a lake and I'm gonna drown it. <laughs> Shit's gone down there for all of mm. those things yeah. that fall into yeah. place in a kangaroo's mm. life. Mm. Mm. Something's happened, and I think try to me, charge him with a tip. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or it asked them to gift aid some of its food. Mm. I don't know. Um, but Or a Welsh dresser. Who yeah. knows? But for me, they got to be in the conversation yeah, for yeah. biggest snobbed. Yeah. Mm. What's the difference between a kangaroo and a kangaroo? A kangaroo is a marsupial, See? and a kangaroo is what a Geordie says when it's stuck in something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet you Dave. that one goes down well in Sunderland. Yeah, oh, they love it. They, they love, love it that though. one, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was You're all welcome. a mission. That is the end. Now, do you know, do oh, you know oh, can oh, I just, oh. the, yes. the actual yes. real knobheads, and we know this for a fact, dolphins. I don't know whether the Dolphins are knobheads because they've convinced the world that they're all sound and they're all clever and they're giving it the old, <laughs> my God, man, and they're giving it all that. They are knobheads. Let's get it right. I don't know whether... If they were actually clever, they wouldn't just be like dying in the Thames, would they, and stuff like that. But maybe that's just the end. That's where they go to die. They've had the fun go to the ocean. London to die? Because why mm-hmm. wouldn't Yeah, They're just like, I'm, I'm going here. I'm going here. My last resting place. <laughs> All the places Wanna they could go. a couple of sites, yeah. and then I'm done. Gotcha you know what I mean? Dolphin <laughs> and out. show. Yeah, exactly. Down the London Eye. Down, down the West End. Check out the London Eye. Have mm, a look at the Millennium colors. Dome. Mm. Bang. There's no purpose to Big it. Big It's a... And on that note, we are definitely done. That is it for another episode of the 1878. We'll be back next week. Spiders and insects may well be on the agenda. Oh, Who knows? Spiders. You never know. Everton might be owned by no, what? someone I, other is than Is a spider spider. an insect or is it an arachnid? Just a knobhead. It's a, yeah. and, well, Dave, we can clarify yeah. that next week. Yeah, yeah. 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 Leave, them, leave them wanting more. We'll leave them wanting more. Mm. Dave mm. will, of course, also be researching the honey badger. For an update mm-hmm. on that, make sure you like, subscribe, by going through review. the books and the tip. <laughs> Do all of that stuff, and we will see you all next week. Nice one, boys. Take it easy. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.